Hello, my name is Tete Jacob Sirichi and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notification bell so that if I post a video, you'll be the first to receive it. Today our discussion will be on this script mathematics and we are talking about relation. Last, we learned what is a relation. We learned how to define a, set, a, a relation on a particular set. We learned how to represent a relation on directed graph. We we'll also talk about how to represent relations as matrices. We we'll look at the number of relations that a particular set will have. If you have not watched that video, please go to my channel, TTJ Kept Sewichi, and search for that video and watch. Today, before this video will end, we'll be looking at properties of relations. Then, among these properties, we'll take three of them. Each of them will look at what they mean. How to determine that part particular relation defined on a set, how to represent that relation on directed graphs, and how to determine if a particular matrix represents that relation. This is a very interesting discussion. So, generally, the relation defined on a particular set are six, the properties of that are six. A relation will either be reflexive, irreflexive, symmetric, asymmetric, antisymmetric, then transitive. So these are the properties of relation. Take, uh, take a very good look at them. They are six in number. So today, before the video will end, we'll look at the reflexive, irreflexive, and symmetric. And symmetric. Each of them we look at how to determine if a, a particular kind of relation is having such a property. They are directed graphs as well as their matrices. So come with me. So we start things off with the reflexive property. Look, we say a relation is said to be reflexive if every element of the set is related to it, it itself. Remember, every element of the set relate to each other relate to itself, then that relation is said to be reflexive. For instance, we have the set A to be equal to 1, 2, 3. And we have a relation defined on A, and that relation has the other pair, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. If we design all these other pairs, then we say that when you run all these other pairs, then we say that this relation is reflexive. Why is it reflexive? See, one relate to one, two relate to three relate to three. For all the elements in the set A. So when it happens like that, then we say that the relation is reflexive. If there is one element which does not relate itself in the, in the relation, then that relation ceases to be reflexive. It ceases to be reflexive. So we take sample relations defined on the set and see which one is reflexive and which one is not. So there is a question. I said, determine which of the following relations defined on the set A, which is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, is reflexive. Which one is reflexive and which one is not, actually? So first, Look at the members of the set. That's one, two, three, four. Find out if each of these elements of the set relate to each other. If they relate to each other, it's reflexive. If they don't, then it is not reflexive. So let's see one relate one, perfect. Two relate two, perfect. Three relate three, as well as four relate four. So they all relate each other. So we say R1 is reflexive. Is reflexive. As far as all of them relate each other, all, all of them relate themselves, then we say it's reflexive. Now let's look at the R2. One relate one, no problem. Two relate two, good. Three does not relate three, but four relate four. But because three alone does not relate 3. When it doesn't, this is how we write it. Since 3 does not relate 3, 
R2 is not reflexive. It's not what? Reflexive. Now let's check this one here. So 1 relate to 1, but 2 does not relate to 3 does not. So we said 1 relate to 1, 2 does not relate to 3 does not relate 3, and 4 does not relate 4. So as far as 2 does, even 1 alone is enough reason. So we said R3 is not, is not reflexive. It's not reflexive. So I hope you will determine how uh, whether a relation is reflexive. Just find out if all the members of the set relate themselves. If they relate themselves, then that set is reflexive. If they doesn't, then it is not reflexive. Then it is something else. The next thing is that we we'll look at the directed graph for a reflexive relation. So last, we learn how to represent relations on directed graphs. Please, if you have not watched that video, go to YouTube and search for the TJKFC Richard and look for that video and watch. Now, we will we'll try to represent this relation on directed graph and we'll see how the graph will look like. But first, let's determine whether this relation is reflexive. So the directed graph for reflective relation so that we we'll know how it looks like. So let's see, 1 relate 1, 2 relate 2, 3 relate 3, 4 relate 4, for all these members. So all the members of this set relate it themselves. They relate themselves. So we say that the relation is reflexive, correct. Now let's represent them on directed graph and see how the graph will look like. So we have 1, 2, 3, so one relate one. Remember, what did we say? It's a self loop. So we go. Two relate two, another self loop. Then two relate three. That's a, a line from two to three. So two to three. Then three relate itself, self loop. Then four relate itself. Another self. Now look at it. All the members of this set have a self loop. So if you if they ask you whether a graph represents a reflexive property, just check whether all the members of that set on a graph have a self loop. If they have a self loop, that self loop, self loop. If they have that self loop, that's one related cell, two related cell, three related cell, four related cell. As far as they have that, they will say that the graph is having a reflexive property. I hope you get that. The next thing is that we'll try to see if a matrix represents a reflexive property. So come with me. Yeah, so the next thing is that we look at the matrix for a reflexive property. Last, we learn how to represent relations as matrices. We learn how to do that. So, before we determine whether a matrix has a reflexive property, that's a matrix for a relation has a reflexive property. I want to explain something to you. See, if we have this matrix, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9. Okay? The matrices here, look at them, these ones. They are called, that's the principal diagonal. The principal diagonal. Very, very necessary. So that's principal diagonal. Now, how do you determine if a matrix for a relation is reflexive? Check all the entries in the principal diagonal. If they are 1, 1, 1, 1, then that matrix re represents a reflexive property. If all the entries in the principal diagonal are not one, then it does not represent a reflexive property. So come with me. There is a question and it says, determine whether the matrix of the relation, this relation, defined on the set 1, 2, 3, is reflexive or not. So now let's, let's 
let's let's maybe determine that or let's assume that we don't know whether this relation is reflexive. Maybe let's assume like that. And represent this relation for the sake of those who don't know how to represent it as a matrix. Then we determine whether that matrix represents a reflexive property. So then the matrix of this relation is equal to. Remember, we said that the number of relation elements in the set will determine the type of matrix. So since we have four elements here, this matrix will be four by four. Four by four. So we will say this will, will save as a guide. One, two, three, four. We just save as a guide. We clean it off. And if you can remember very well, we say if one element relates another, it's an on state. We represent it with one. If it doesn't, then it's an off state. Then we represent it with zero. So now let's go. Does one relate one? Yes, one relate one. On state, one. Does one relate two? Do we have one, two here? No. Off state, so zero. Does one relate three? Do we have one, three? No. All states zero. Do we have one for no? All states zero. Do we have two one? Does that's two relate one? No. So all states zero. Does two relate two? Yes. So on state one. Does two relate three? Do we have two three? Yes. So on state one. Does two relate four? No. So zero. Does three relate one? No. All states zero. Does three relate to no all state zero? We don't have three two. Does three relate three? Yes, it's here. So on state one. Does three relate four? No, all state zero. Does four relate one? No. Does it relate two? No. Does it relate three? No. Does it relate itself? Yes, on state one. Now we can clean up this. We can clean up this. It's just a guide to help us determine the matrix. So this is the matrix. Of this are relation. Now look at the entries in the principal diagonal. So the principal, all the entries in that principal diagonal are one. As far as they are like that, then the matrix, the matrix is reflexive. Is reflexive or is having a reflexive property. Is having a reflexive property. That is it. That is it. I hope you I hope you, you understand this. Anytime they give you a matrix to determine whether the matrix is having a reflexive property, just check all the entries in the principal diagonal. If it if it is one, if all the entries there are one, then that matrix is reflexive. If they are not, then it is something else, which we'll talk about. So come with me. Okay, so before we talk about the other property of relation, take note of this, that equality, less or equal to and greater or equal to represent a reflexive property. Just take note of this. Name. As we go on, I will explain that to you. I will explain that. That equal to, less or equal to and greater or equal to, they represent a reflexive property. Because if, once, if one, one is equal to one, we can have one, one. Now, if one is uh, less or equal to uh, one, we can still have our one one still, and the same way apply to that. So take note of it. Now the next thing, irreflexive property. If a relation is not reflexive, then it is irreflexive. It's as simple as that. So you know reflexive property. If a relation does not represent a reflexive property, then it is irreflexive. Now let's look at this set and check whether it is reflexive or irreflexive. Now let's check. One relate to one. One relate to one. Two also relate to. Good. Does three relate three? No. Three does not relate three. So this relation is irreflexive. Irreflexive. It is not reflexive. It is not reflexive because three does not relate three. Remember, reflexive property, all the set must relate itself. So all the members of the set must relate itself. So this is irreflexive because 3 does not relate 3. Now remember, how to determine if a directed graph is having a reflexive property or not. So we said directed graph is having a reflexive property. If all the elements in the set of the directed graph has a self-loop. 
So now let's check. One is having self loop. Two is having self loop. But look at three. Three is not having self loop. So this graph is irreflexive. It's irreflexive. It's irreflexive. Now let's come to the next one, which is a matrix. Remember, we say a matrix represents a reflexive relation. If all the elements in the principal diagonals are one. So let's check all the elements in the principal diagonal. Look at this. They are not all one because this is zero. Then this matrix is also irreflexive. Irreflexive. I hope you get the irreflexive property. So if a relation is not is not what is not reflexive, then it is irreflexive. I hope you get that. The next thing is the symmetric the symmetric property. So the next property we we'll talk about is a symmetric property, and we say that a relation is said to be symmetric if a b that's a relate b is a member of R. And also B relate A is also a member of A. For all A, B is a member of A. This is a little bit uh, uh, mathematical. Let me try to explain it in a layman definition for you. So you check a relation. If one relation relates another. So let's say if A, if one relates two. Check whether two also relate one in that relation. For all as far as one element relate the other, then what the opposite must happen. If it occur in that set, for all, for all other pairs, then we say that that relation is symmetric. If not, it is not. Let's take a sample so that you will understand better. You see, which of the following, uh, which of the following relation defined on the set A equal to this is symmetric? Which one is symmetric? So you check the the what's the name? The the self-related properties may not necessarily be, be important when it comes to symmetry. In the sense that if one relate one, we flip it again, one will relate one. So no problem. It will still be a member. So that one will not our attention will not be much on it. But those that are not equal, remember they are not equal. So, one relate two. As I said, does two relate one? Two relate one is there. If it is there, then we say the set is symmetric. Is symmetric. Maybe this relation does not contain a lot of other things. Let's check this one. Now, one relate two. As I said, does two relate one? Yes. Let's come here. Three relate four. Does four relate four? Uh, 4 relate 3 in this set. Do we have the other pair 4, 3? Since we have 3, 4, do we have 4, 3 in this? If no, then the set is not symmetric. So we said that 3 relate 4, but 4 does not relate 3. So this set, the R2, is not symmetric. It's not, not, not symmetric. Now let's check this one, the third one, R3. See? One relate to, as I said, one will flip, we'll get two one. Is two one in the set? Yes, two one is there. One relate four, one will flip is four one. Is there four one? Yes, there is four one here. That's for all. The rest are equal, so there will not be much attention. So one relate two, two relate one, perfect. One relate four, four relate one, perfect. Then we say R3 is also symmetric. It's symmetric. I hope you get that. Now, let's check the R4. R4. See, 2 relates 1. But 1 does not relate to. That alone is an enough reason to disqualify this relation for being symmetric. It's an enough reason. But see, look also. See, 3 relates 1. But 1 does not relate 3. We don't have 1, 3. 3 relates 2. Do we have 2, 3? No. So this R4 is not symmetric is not symmetric I, I, hope, I, I hope you get that I hope you get that so you'll be able to determine whether a relation is symmetric or not so if one element relates and I find out whether the opposite happens if you do then the relation is symmetric if it doesn't then it is not symmetric the next thing is that 
we'll look at how the directed graph for symmetric property looks like. So come with me. So now let's look at the directed graph for symmetric property. Let me see. See, we have two graphs on the board. Let's see which one is have a symmetric property and which one is not. So remember, symmetric property, when one relates to two mass, relate, the opposite mass happen. And if three relate to one, one mass relate, that's the opposite mass happen. So we check. Look at it. One relate one. So we have one relating two. One relate two. So we, we have that. Now do we have two relate one? Yes. Two relate one. Perfect. Now look at this. One is relating three. So one relate three. Does three relate one? Three also relate one. Then we say that this graph is having a symmetric property. Now let's check this. Let's check this. Look at it. One relate, the self loop, I told you, is not all that necessary. See, one relate two, but two does not relate one. We don't have the opposite. One relate three. Three does not relate one. We don't have the opposite. So this is not symmetric. It's not. It's not symmetric. I hope you get that. So if one relates the other, the opposite must happen. If you do, then it's having a symmetric property. If it doesn't, it's not having a symmetric property. Now the next thing is how the matrix of a symmetric property looks like. How, whether we determine whether a matrix is having a symmetric property or not. So, so come with me. So the next thing is we look at the symmetric property of a matrix. We determine whether a matrix is symmetric. A matrix of a relation is symmetric or not. Now, a matrix A is said to have a symmetric property if the matrix A is equal to the A transport. This is called A transport. Now, what is the meaning? Let's say if I have a matrix A to be 1, 2, 3, then 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9. Okay, this is the matrix. What is A transpose? A transpose means you see the column will become the row. The column will become the row. Then the column will become the row. So let's see. So A transpose will be now the row we have one, two, the column we have one, two, three. It becomes the row. One, two, three. Now what we have in the second column? Four, five, six. It becomes the second row. Four, five, six. Now, what we have in the third column, seven, eight, nine, it becomes the third row. That will be seven, eight, nine. So, after you find a and a transpose for a, a matrix of a relation, and the a is equal to the a transpose, in this case, you see that they are not the same. So, if the a is equal to the a transpose, then we say that matrix is symmetric. If it is not, then it is not symmetric. Now let's check this a matrix of a relation. Maybe this is a relation. I want to find whether this matrix is having a symmetric property or not. So since the matrix A is given to us, we just find A transpose. So remember A transpose. The columns will become the row. So the columns will have 0, 0, 1. So right, it becomes the first row. So 0, 0, 1. What we have here is 0, 1, 0. It becomes the second row. 0, 1, 0. What we have here is 1, 0, 1. It becomes the third row. 1, 0, 1. Now let's compare. So and see if they are equal. See, we have 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. They are equal. So we say A is equal to the A transpose. If it happens like that, then we say A is symmetric. Is symmetric. I, I hope you get this. This is a very interesting thing, and I know you, you understand very well. Play over the video and you get a concept. The next time we meet, we talk about the other properties of a relation. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the notification bell so that if I share a video, You'll be the first to receive it. Until then, bye-bye.